the three behemoth guitar players of today. Stay tuned, this might get loud. Hey, it's me, Baxter. And me, Jonathan. Okay, so we were talking about the documentary this might get loud. Yeah, that's right. Where you have Jimmy Page, yep. the GOAT, you have The Edge. The Edge. And then you have The Jack White. That's right. Of The White Stripes, almost at the end. And they, they had this documentary where all three of them get together and they sort of jam and trade licks and sort of like fanboy over each other. You guys are amazing. No, except you're for, amazing. Well, except for Jimmy Page. She's just like, <laughs> I know I'm amazing. Thank you very much. That's not how you play it. Um, yeah. You're doing this uh, all wrong, but nice try. I, that, I was very excited about that movie when it came out. Like, I remember getting it on DVD and yes. all that stuff or Blu-ray or something like that. And, um, yeah, it was very cool. It was, it was a cool movie. Well, so uh, we wanted to modernize it. Like, who are the heroes of, like, sort of our, our, our patriarchs, our middle range, and then of now? And yeah. So, so, yeah. And, and the first two were pretty freaking easy, I think. Well, the first person I thought of was, I was like, it's got to be John Mayer. Like, John Mayer is the most... Like, like he's not the patriarch guy, but he's the most like he's the middle. Yeah, but he's everyone knows who John Mayer is right now. You know, from Dead and Company to his 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 stuff to just and his just, body will always that's right be a wonderland to me. Um, well, it is. It is. He's amazing. But no, John, he's the, he's the technician, watch guru, extraordinaire, shoe connoisseur, just a phenomenal player though. Yeah, as well. But let's go to the the goat of this sort of previous generation of his too. We're judging by uh, signature artist model guitars. So the winner has to be Slash. <laughs> so, I mean, Slash. Um, I mean, hands down, some of the great, I'd say Appetite for Destruction, one of the greatest rock and roll records ever made. Yeah. Um, Sweet Child of Mine, one of the greatest guitar solos ever recorded. I think if you walk down the street and you said, hey, to just average people, not guitar players, hey, who's the greatest guitar player? Well, they're not going to say Eric Johnson. They're not going to say Steve Vai. They're going to say... Slash. They don't know who Tommy Emanuel is, but they know who Slash is, you know? And so and part uh, of this this rating system that we've developed, it's very scientific, but it has to be commercial success as well. They have to be, right? Because I think that's how they had to probably do It Might Get Loud. And I'm not even sure they made the best choices. But, <laughs> but no, but you look at it, like, commercially, um, like, those people are such smash yeah, hits. That's right. And, like, in our person for the third person, like, we're going to get to it in a minute because there's lots of other people that would go, you'd go to before, maybe thinking. There's really not. But I mean, there's, there's, no, it's hard to even get a third person well, but right now. But it's almost the same as like, as like when you looked at those, you you, know, you have Led Zeppelin, massive, oh, man. one of the biggest rock bands ever. You have U2. And people still the, know who Led Zeppelin are. I mean, you know what I mean? People so, still know U2, yeah. obviously. It's one of the biggest commercially successful. They just hate them now. <laughs> no one hates them. How dare them put free music on my phone. You're such a weirdo. I love free things. Um, but they're one of the most commercially successful bands in history. And I love the too, most the successful Irish band ever. There you go. Irish from the Republic. Thank Even though my hat goes off to you guys in the north, I'm a big Northern Irish fan. Anybody watching in Newry, hats off to you. It's my, it's my town. It's my boys there. My peeps. Or if you work at Loud Guitars, that's cool too. Um, and Alistair, we miss you. We love you. Peace be with you wherever you've gone. Anyway, moving on. Um, but then you had Jack White, who was this sort of weird Artur, indie rock, but, but really inspiring people to play guitar in a different way too and then commercially successful like, i was gonna say he was huge at the time everybody can hum seven nation army that's the most played song in guitar it's, shops it's like the new Period. stairway to heaven smoke know. in the water is uh, now seven nation Army. yeah kids want to learn that now we get into today like who are the guitar heroes of today <laughs> oddly enough there's still the old dudes we talked about because even john mayer you think oh he's young and hip he's kind of i mean he's getting you know is he like 50 i don't know i don't know He's, he's probably 40s, right? I don't know. I, he I can't be tell. 50. He could be close to 50. I mean, he could, God, he could be. 49? 42? Then, then you get old Slash. Um, Slash is probably, still, he's still like 28, 28. I feel like Slash is as popular as ever. And I feel like forever, Slash had this mystique that's just now with social media. You kind of feel like you're getting a little different peek at Slash. Man, if Slash is walking down the street, you know it's Slash. I mean, yeah. John Mayer, you do too, because he's so attractive. That's true. It's frustrating. Um, so you have you have bands like what Polyphia? Who? Yeah, we well, you know like old Tim. I, I know, but no one else knows. I, know. I mean, like, I mean, like if you're not like, a guitar, we live in our own little bubble, right? Like if you're watching this, you probably live in the same bubble that we do. But I just don't, I just don't know that anyone 
really knows. You know, we, we, were, we were laughing too, like, you know, like all the things like, you know, the news guitar from like Johnny Langs and all these cats and they never really sort of became like the pop megastars. But they were cats. all like, you know, there was a Guitar World cover you can find, the new guitar hero, and it's the dude from the Los Lonely Boys, who is a great player. That was a great song with all the cool little, you know, yes. the How Far Seven, but never, that never came to fruition in the way that. Yeah. No, so um, um, you, you kind of came up with this last, and we were curious what you think, so put your comments in now before you watch the rest of the video. Who's the third guy? It's, it was, you said it, and I was like, yeah. It just hit me all at once. And it frustrated me when you said it, because I was like. Because we threw an honorable mention to Marcus King. We just couldn't decide if he was quite commercial enough, like as far as people knowing who he is yet. He might get there. I think he's got super talented, obviously. Yeah, we love Marcus. But I think the absolute hands-down winner's got to be Billy Strings. I, good job on that one. I, I'm, I, and I would, I, and I'm, part of me is like, what? Yes, no, yes. I did this all within like a split second because he's not as commercially successful as what you think of the things in the past, but that's what has changed. People don't buy units like they used to. Well, and he, you can't point to a song for him other than, like, I, I mean, maybe Dustin the Baggy is probably... But he's a cultural sort of phenomenon at the moment, right? Like, people go to Billy Strings shows, and if Billy Strings is going to be at a show, like, sitting in, I think people go. And I think, you know, average people I know know who Billy Strings is. I feel like he took the mantle of, like, Mumford & Sons yeah. from, like, years ago when they were, like, you know, I will wait type of single period and sort of translated that, like the, the need, there's always a need for a strong acoustic artist yeah. in this world that we speak about. And he has sort of taken that mantle and has made bluegrass. Sexy, <laughs> weirdly enough. And he's having a kid. I think I just Wait, saw so him. he is, he's made love with someone then. Yes. A bluegrass player. Weird, right? That's made love. <laughs> Crazy. With someone who's creating horrible, a human. Um, was there a dog touching me? There's a dog touching. That me. was really cute. Um, um, but yeah, I think. I mean, I don't know. I, just no, think, so I, I think that's a good choice. It's so imagine slash John Mayer and Billy Strings. I think that's interesting, and I bet they have a great time. And you know, what song they, they would play? Time. They would play Patience, <laughs> and it would be awesome. And they, would, I mean, I, I tell me that you don't want to see Billy Strings and John Mayer like cut hit not really they'd be jamming but that would be phenomenal in a weird way and, and I, they both got the like grateful dead tie-in well and, and and they both everyone who's ever learned guitar has learned sweet child of mine yes like they've all learned it we've all played it you love it and and then all i mean just that album alone Here, here's the weird thing right here's here's the weird parallel to me for it might get loud and it might get loud right like uh you could point to like great songs from Jack White and the great songs from The Edge that they like show the riff to. But then Jimmy Page is sort of like the best player, you know, probably like best improviser, even though that's not really his thing. But you know what I'm saying? Right. And then now it's sort of the other way. Like yeah. Slash will be showing like his best, like how to play, actually play the riff to like Welcome to the Jungle or something. And then you got Super Jammers, you know, as the younger guys. Kind of weird. Kind of a weird. It, it is a neat story because the expertise is outrageous on you know on all of them but you get to like billy strings like he, he's prodigy level on yeah. on bluegrass you know it's just it's absurd his electric playing is great too but i mean and you know so slash and john mayer have jammed together yes they've been on stage pretty cool playing blues stuff um at mountain jam in north carolina i do believe Th that one that was so good is the bb king john mayer and trucks yeah when, when, when like john mayer just like stops because like trucks just does this lick that's destroying. It's sort of soul destroying what he did and in a great way. It's like And the BB King is like basically saying it's the best he's ever heard. Telling Susan he can see why she married him. I, that was that's actually a great clip. But I, I feel like John Mayer is is actually John Mayer is phenomenal. It. Um I mean he is he is well, he phenomenal. had that moment where he's just like that yeah when you hear something like that you're sitting next to it and you have to appreciate the brilliance of that. Oh I think John Mayer appreciates that. I think he loved genuine genuinely loved not to be too much of a John Mayer sort of like, you know Fan boy, but I think he I think he genuinely enjoys music. I think so too. So I think that's a pretty good setup, a pretty good line. That's it. Let's make it happen. So we Let's, just need an angel investor, <laughs> and we'll get it. We'll I'll make it the together. phone calls. I can get uh, in touch with a couple of them. Slash, I feel like it's impossible to get in touch with, but maybe, maybe, maybe through some of our friends now. No. <laughs> no. Who's it's, calling? No. The casino? What? No. Nah. Not even. We don't play casinos. 
<laughs> I mean, That'd be really funny. <laughs> they might. If you offer, I bet, I bet Slash of Snake Pit would play a casino, like a really cool casino. A really cool casino. Like, um, not not Circus Circus. No. I, I think that might be gone too. They might have destroyed Circus Circus. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. That was a special casino. If you've ever been there, I remember going there once. I like, whoa, this is <laughs> so <laughs> this is tough. But um, no, I like that list. I'm, I I would like to see that t that grouping together. I think that would be. I would love to watch that. And just the because I also feel like you know Slash lived in the time of complete abandoned rock and roll mayhem party. Do you think it might get loud? Would have been better had there been like some sort of moderator in there, like because it was just the three of them, right? Like if there was an outside party, like Rigby Atto. Let's say Rigby Atto's in this too. No, I want Joe Rogan, but Joe Rogan from the Fear Factor. I like Joe Rogan with hair. I don't know. I want. I think that'd be really funny. <laughs> That All right, I want you guys to eat the worms now. <laughs> it's like half discussion, half fear factor, half, half, like truth or dare. Great show. Kind of thing. Billy Strings wins, hands down. Probably. I he's, Slash he's... can have snakes on him, though. Okay. All right. I don't know. Maybe. I, may I mean, not. I feel like Slash could still take both those guys. I think. In a fight. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. hands down. Slash. He's like breaking a beer bottle. Ah, and he throws <laughs> snakes out of his hat. But no, I, I think uh, just having the three of them together might be pretty magical because John Mayer is, he's a moderator. Okay. Like he's an expert. He is the moderator of. It. I could see that. And he would take on that role. Okay. All really right. strings is really funny in his interviews. Slash is, he is mysterious and salty and sexy as he's always been. I think he just put those three in a room. God, it's gotta happen. Look, it might get loud too. Coming from Casino Guitars production team. Imagine that wall of Slash uh, magnetones in the back. So that I'll be playing through. Let's talk to Eric and the fun news. Done. Done. Thanks for joining us. Click like, subscribe. Hit the bell. Enjoy and let us know your thoughts of who those players are and how wrong or how right. It's so wrong. Right. Totally right. Billy who?